Hi friends, I'm Janet Ingle, the happiest musician. I was out for my run this morning and I'm not a serious runner anymore. I just kind of go out and shuffle around, but it's so good for my mental health and yada yada. But I used to be a relatively serious runner, a relatively serious like old lady runner. And the thing that would often break me through a run that was not going well, where I felt like I was killing myself trying to keep moving forward, is remembering that it's allowed to be easy and looking for the easy way. And when I was running, specifically that meant to like stop bouncing up and down so much, stop pounding so hard, and just let myself feel the enjoyment of moving forward and letting it feel easy in my body. And we know, we absolutely know what that difference is, right? If you even, if you're out jogging, if you're out even walking and you suddenly say to yourself, hey, am I doing this the easiest way? What, do, what about my body doesn't feel easy? You can tell where you're holding tension, where you are uh, preventing yourself from moving easily through the world. And as soon as I would change that, as I would just reset my intention to not be about working harder, but to be about just running more efficiently and moving more efficiently, immediately things got better. Now, this is a conversation that I already had this morning once in my warm up your warm up group um, with, I don't know, eight or 10 oboists in the Zoom room. We talked about this and it's something that I talk about with oboists all the time because the oboe is difficult and it's fussy and the reeds and the stress and the like the exposed nature of a lot of oboe parts in the orchestra. We develop a lot of tension and it's easy for us to um, carry too much and work too hard at this instrument that everyone has told us is hard. And I talk all the time about how can we find the easy way to play the oboe? How can we take the tension of this experience away from the reed itself, which is really just like a couple of little pieces of damp wood, and manage the air somewhere else in our body so that it's not like all bottlenecked up right at the reed so that we're not throwing all of our energy against the resistance of the oboe directly and doing a direct battle with the oboe itself but so that we can find comfort and ease in our physical bodies and produce the music from inside ourselves instead of by doing battle with the oboe and like th this is a common topic of conversation for me. I, I address it all the time in my Invincible Oboist classes, in one-to-one -one lessons, in my flow group, um, and today in warm-ups with my oboists. It's, it feels so important and valuable to me to help people find the easy way to play the oboe, which is not to say that the oboe is easy, because of course it's not, and it's not to say that we're looking for shortcuts or we're looking for hacks or, or tricks. Like the goal is artistry, of course, but we don't have to have tension in our shoulders and tension in our temples. And like, I don't have to be holding my thighs so tightly when I'm playing the oboe. And yet we do this. We do this to ourselves all the time because it feels stressful to make music. And so I'm always looking for the easy way. And one of the reasons that I brought it up in warmups today is that it's so good to be able to use the very de-emotionalized context of warmups to work on the things that you want. And in this case, I think probably we all want greater ease and greater effortlessness on the oboe. If you have a habit, a mindful habit of doing your long tones, doing your scales with a goal of letting it be easy, allowing it to feel easy and comfortable in your body to play the oboe, you'll have that practice to fall back on when you're in the orchestra and things do feel stressful, when you do get scared of what's going on, when you do, when the stakes do feel higher because there's an audience there. Being able to fall back on the thing that you have practiced, which is being easy, being effortless on the oboe, is such a, a lovely such a lovely thing. And I thought I would bring this into this Facebook Live today, which 
I'm also going to try to share on my podcast, my Crushing Classical podcast. I'm bringing all of this to you in this way because I think that finding the easy way is really valuable in life as well and in business, in entrepreneurship. We can make things very, very hard, right? I, I have dipped in and out of the um, of various courses, various online online business programs, right? Here is how you launch. Here is how you build an email funnel. Here is how you uh, create um, customers. Here is how you, here is how you create clients. Like, there's a lot of effort and energy and processes and things that can go into being in online business. And I acknowledge that there are people who know these things and that there are techniques that can be used and I, I use them in many cases. But I love to look for the easy way. And if the easy way is doing the things that feel easy and joyful to me, and also help other people, that seems like the easy way. So for example, the very warm-ups that I was just talking about, the warm-up group that I'm running this week. I have to warm up anyway. I love the oboe and I love talking about it. I am aware that having just 20 minutes of really mindful attention to the oboe can help everybody, and I'm aware that not everyone does it. There is a little bit of work involved, certainly, in putting together this little warm-up group, my Warm Up Your Warm Up program, which I run every few months. Um, it's identifying music, making sure that I send out emails and remind people to show up, making sure that I like create and, and share the replay. But it's a very small amount of work for the amount of pleasure that I get from it, from doing something that feels so comfortable and natural to me to do and which does bring in a little bit of money because I sold it because and for and I sold it for a value that feels that I hope feels fair that people get value from it and that I get value in return that's really all that being in business has to be similarly I have a, I, I love speaking to you here on Facebook Live. I love talking to my podcast listeners. I thought, haha, what if I had something intelligent to say about ease and effortlessness? And I shared it on Facebook and then I pulled that audio out and shared it on my podcast. Could I do that? I'm going to find out. Um, and if you're hearing this on Crushing Classical, look, I figured it out. And I don't think that I'm cheating by doing this the easy way by having an idea about what I was going to talk about, hopping on to talk about it with you now live, and then sharing that audio again later. I think there, I think, I hope there's value for everybody. And I'm doing it in a way, I'm, I'm looking for the way to do it. That feels easy and fun and enjoyable for me and I hope for you. Thank you for listening. Thanks for considering what I'm talking about. And as you move forward through your day, as you hit bottlenecks, as you hit moments where you're like, ugh, this is so hard, or this is so annoying, or why do I have to do this? Could you look for the easy way? Is there a way to simply shift your mind, relax your body, find a more easy and effortless and enjoyable way to move through the thing that you're straining at. That is my hope for you today. Please comment. Let me know if this feels resonant for you at all or helpful. Thank you so much for being here with me and have a great day.